This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 8. Surrender The moment Valerius walked into the shop, a man, or rather a roly-poly ball with arms and legs, with a balloon animal that looked suspiciously like a black dragon on his head, waddled up to him. Valerius frowned at the balloon animal, as the man was half his height, and his face was a foot beneath the balloon. Wally! A young woman who was hiding her face behind a wall of hair hissed. The hat! Take off the balloon hat! Wally looked startled for a moment before he removed the hat, which squeaked as he took it off his bald head. The young woman took it from him and tossed it behind a rack of hoodies that had werewolves printed on them. Wally cleared his throat and did an awkward, stiff bow. <clears throat> Dragon King Valerius, we are so pleased to welcome you to Wally Nuts, emporium of rare and exotic goods. As you can see, we are very into, uh, uh, um, making money off his image, the young woman offered at the corner of her mouth. Wally gave her a sharp look. No, Landry. Um, we are very into you, King Valerius. Honoring you. Yes, honoring. He gestured towards piles of black dragon plushies. Shioni had already picked one up and was smiling at it. She cuddled it against her cheek and said brightly, Oh, Valerius, they are so cute and soft. I totally must get one. Valerius's lips compressed into a tight line. Raziel looked at them with little interest. It could not connect how that soft bit of cloth and its huge form were at all related. It curled in his chest, a huff of smoke leaving its nostrils as it settled in. It did not sense the white dragon shifter here. As he scanned Wally and Landry, there was nothing about them that smelled of dragon, and neither matched Captain Nagoye's description of a young man. Of course he is no longer here, Valerius thought. Coming back here would be almost as insane as going back home. But these people will know his name, and they will know what he is like. We can learn much from them. If you'd like one, what is only 1995, Wally brightened. The young woman elbowed him. Um, but for you, we'll, we'll give you the special price of, ow, Landry, she elbowed him again. He rubbed his round stomach. You can have it for free, of course. One would hope so, Simi said coolly. I do not believe that King Valerius has licensed you to sell his likeness, has he? The claw captain lifted up a t-shirt with Valerius's grim, if handsome, visage, with a stylized dragon circling his head on it, as if an exhibit. Wally swallowed, and a hand crept up to the collar of his Dragon King Valerius t-shirt that he wore. He tugged at it, and went distinctly sweaty. But Valerius cared little about such tchotchkes and chintzy souvenirs. This is not what we came here to discuss. Valerius's voice was low, but it broke through the idle conversation. Wally looked stricken again. Even the outspoken Landry seemed to turtle in on herself. Why are you here? Not that we mind. Happy to have you here. Maybe you can even sign some of the mugs. Wally grabbed a mug with a black dragon on it and held it out to Valerius, hopefully. He only lowered it when Valerius stared at him hard. There was a ting of the bell above the door as Captain Nagoye strode in. She was only a shade over five feet and, like Simi, was not the usual werewolf shifter, but instead was a lion shifter. Her highly logical mind had placed her in leadership position after leadership position until she had reached captain. He knew she would go higher, but needed more age before that would happen. She was holding a tablet. She marched up and bowed low to Valerius. No need for that, Captain Nagoye. You have brought us the image of the young man we are looking for? He extended a hand to her. She rose gracefully and handed him the tablet after unlocking it. What appeared on the screen was a rather grainy black and white still image of a young man exiting this shop. Raziel leaned towards the screen, black smoke pouring out of its nostrils, remembering its prey. Valerius's feelings were strangely muted. This could be anyone. But it was supposedly the white dragon. Another dragon. Like him. He's so young, Valerius thought. Like any man in his twenties finding his way in the world, and have that world utterly change on him in a moment. With his fingers, he enlarged the young man's face, but the image was so low resolution that the face became almost indistinguishable from a blur of black, white, and gray pixels. 
He undid the enlargement and turned the tablet towards Wally. Even before the screen was turned, Wally and Landry were tense. When they saw the young man on the screen, Landry practically jumped. Wally was swallowing convulsively again. Caden, is he okay? Landry asked. Her pudgy, pale hands came together in front of her black t-shirt. They reminded him of starfish in the dark sea. Caden, that is his name, Valerius thought. We will crush this Caden, Raziel growled. He is young and experienced, unable to stand before us. We will do nothing of the sort, Raziel. Keep calm. You will do nothing without my approval, Valerius snapped. Can you tell us what he was doing in Dragonstrike Square? Shioni asked softly. She had two plushies in her hands now. One was pressed against her left cheek while she was rubbing her chin with the other one. He was selling werewolf hoodies and talking to his sister on his phone, Wally said, and his expression became wrenched. I should have told him to stay in the store to make his call, but I thought... I, I thought... He didn't finish the sentence. What was there to say? It wasn't that none of them had thought there could be trouble. Both of his claw captains had been on high alert. The square had been flooded with police and other security, yet a bomb had been placed. What is his full name? Valerius asked. Caden Bryce, Wally answered. The name was pleasant, and Valerius could almost imagine it tripping off his tongue. But he has not come back since the bombing, Captain Degoyer confirmed. Wally shook his head. No, he went out just a minute or two before the commotion started in the square. And like I said, he was just selling merch and talking to his sister. What is his sister's name? And we'll also need an address? Captain Nagoye whipped out another smaller tablet and pen to write it all down. Wally's dark eyes flickered among all of them, and understanding dawned on him. Caden had no part in this. He's a wonderful kid. There's no way he set a bomb. He couldn't have. He didn't even have anything but werewolf hoodies in his hands, and... Is Caden okay? Landry interrupted. Was he hurt? Where is he? Why are you guys looking for him? He is a person of interest in our inquiry, Captain Nagoye answered almost primly. Landry clutched at Wally's shoulders. Don't tell them anything else, Wally. They're trying to railroad somebody for the bomb, and they're going to pin it on Caden. Wally went bug-eyed. That's insane. He'd be more the type that would try to get rid of the bomb, or help people to safety. That's what we hoped had happened, and the police were simply here because they wanted to interview him. Again, Wally's voice dropped off. Yeah, Caden totally wouldn't hurt anybody. He loves the anniversary and all the crowds of people taking photos of you, your majesty. Landry didn't hide her scorn now that she believed they were going after Caden. She was brave. He had to give her that. We are not suggesting that Caden placed the bomb. It was Shioni who interjected in her calm voice. She stepped over, still holding the plushies possessively as if she feared he would take them from her, and stood by his side, facing Wally and Landry. Her gentle eyes were on the two of them. There was another bit of excitement after the bomb was found. I am sure you heard of it. Are you suggesting that Caden is the white dragon shifter? That's even crazier than him being the bomber, isn't it, Wally? Come on, Wally. Tell them how crazy that is. Caden is shifter? No way. Landry nudged her boss, but Wally did not look like he agreed that such a thing was crazy. He looked thoughtful and afraid. His gaze flickered to Valerius in a way. Of course he had seen, like everyone else had, the fight between him and Caden. You do not think it is so crazy, do you, Wally? Shioni continued in that gentle tone. Caden is brave, kind, and selfless. Just the sort of person a dragon spirit might choose. Again, Wally's gaze flickered to Valerius and his little eyes darkened. A certain kind of dragon spirit, yeah, but he's just a kid. A normal kid. He can't be a part of this. It sounds as if you do not wish him to be, Shioni pointed out. But if he is, and we believe he is, we need to find him right away. I am certain you understand this, do you not? Wally, who had seemed, if nothing else, slightly ridiculous to Valerius up to this point, certainly not fierce, was suddenly scowling. And though he was half Valerius's height, he seemed to roar like a lion instead of a mouse that he was as he pointed at Valerius accusingly. Caden is my friend. You attacked him, or whoever is that white dragon shifter, for absolutely no reason. Don't come here pretending that you're going to help Caden. 
If you think he's a white dragon shifter, then helping him is the last thing on your minds. He crossed those chubby arms over his roly-poly body. Take me to jail. Lock me up tight. Do your worst. I am not helping you one bit more. And those plushies are $25 a piece for you, lady. Wally then clamped his lips shut. Valerius wouldn't have been surprised if he had made a key-locking motion and had thrown the imaginary key over his shoulder after that. Wally didn't, but his expression said it just as well. Me too. I'm not saying another word about Caden to you, you terrible shifters. Landry spat, and she stood ramrod straight. Though their determination not to speak was almost ludicrous, frustration seethed under Valerius' calm exterior. He wanted to grab Wally by the scruff of the neck and make him look into dragon's fire and still claim he would keep his mouth shut. He was pretty sure a glare from Raziel would have Landry choking up all she knew. But he stopped himself. More violence would solve nothing. Yet he had to find Caden. The longer this went on, the worse things would get. He would look less and less in control of his own city. It could spur unrest elsewhere. He knew that news of the newest dragon shifter would have reached others of his kind. They would be watching things carefully waiting to see if he could handle this tiny dragon. Right now, he looked like a bumbling fool who had killed his own people while being outsmarted by a baby shifter. It was absurd. I have his address, Captain Degori said, looking up from her tablet, and relief washed through him. Perhaps his family will be more willing to protect their child's life than his employer is. Are you sure there's nothing we can say to convince you to help us to help Caden? Shioni asked. She had dug out her purse and handed Wally a $50 bill. No! Wally snatched it from her, but did not look pleased. Maybe he wished he'd charged her more. Or maybe he didn't want her to have anything from his shop, even if it wasn't Caden-related. For a moment, Valerius felt a stab of respect for this ridiculous little egg-shaped man and his defiant young woman. It showed something about Caden's character that he could earn such disparate people's respect. This just shows how dangerous he is to us, Raziel rumbled. Or what an asset he could be, Valerius said, and was surprised at the idea. It was something that Shioni would say. He looked at her suspiciously. Please place these two under arrest, Valerius told Simi. For what? Landry squawked. For failing to assist with our investigation, for one, Simi said as he drew out a pair of handcuffs. Landry stared at them with a sort of horror that he could see even beneath her thick bangs. Simi went towards Wally. Landry made a hissing sound through her teeth, which was a combination of fear and anger. Wally, though, lifted up his chin and put his arms out, wrists together, ready to be cuffed. He was serious about going to prison before he said anything more about Caden. The bell over the shop rang sharply, and one of the claw entered, cheeks flushed, and said breathlessly, Captain Nagoye, there's a young man here insisting that he be allowed into the shop. He claims to be... She looked at Valerius for a moment, and then she continued in a softer voice, he claims to be the white dragon shifter. Everyone in that shop seemed to freeze in place. Was Caden Bryce outside? Valerius turned towards the floor-to-ceiling tinted windows. The square was filled with claw who formed a semicircle around the shop. The square was empty beyond. He thought he caught sight of blonde hair, but nothing more. The silence was broken by everyone speaking at once. It can't be him. He wouldn't come back here. Wally? Landry asked. Wally looked grim. If he thought we were in trouble, Landry, I imagine he might. King Valerius' visit has been on the news. Should we bring him in, or do you wish to go outside to him? Simi asked Valerius. His eyes glowed for a moment, eager for a fight. The last thing that Valerius wanted was another fight. Bring him in here. Do it quickly and quietly. Can someone find me a way out of the store that the press won't see us leaving? It will be done, Captain Nagoye said, and spoke into her microphone for Claw to go inspect the building. The Claw disappeared outside again, and it seemed like forever before she brought in two people. Valerius found that he could not breathe. Raziel was very still, eyes narrowed, black smoke issuing from its nostrils. One of the people brought in was a girl of about 13, with spiky blonde hair and huge blue eyes. She immediately squeaked Wally and Landry's names. The person whose hand she was holding, a young man of uncommon beauty, urged her to go to the two of them. Then that same young man turned haunted eyes towards Valerius. Time seemed to slow as he looked into the white dragon shifter's eyes. 
There was no doubt in his mind that this was the one he had been searching for, the one he had fought, the one that had outwitted him. Caden Bryce was lean and lithely muscled with an almost angelic face. He could have walked out of a niche, been carved by a Greek sculptor, been worshipped for his almost classical beauty. He was fully grown, but still so young. Caden's faintly pink lips were parted and he kept licking them nervously. His eyes met Valerius's and then quickly darted away. His hands rubbed nervously over the front of his pants. He was terrified. The acrid stench of fear rolled off of him, obscuring a citrus sweetness. All Valerius could think was how wrong that acrid bitter scent was. He wanted to look away from Caden, lower his head, and cross his arms over his chest. He realized then that he felt ashamed for causing this terror. I hope you are enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. One of the things I enjoy most about Dragon's Reign is the world building. Creating a complex and full world is fascinating to me. Answering the questions, what if shifters were real and out in the open and how would the world change and be is like catnip to me. While I asked the same sorts of questions when I started the massive vampire serial story, Everdark. In Everdark, an ancient vampire king gets awakened by a bold urban explorer out to prove that vampires exist, along with his skeptical best friend. The two former humans are thrown into a world of vampires that exists right alongside their own, including developing their own vampire powers. A vampire romance with two main couples, many characters, magical powers, and a huge world of vampire culture and mythology awaits. If you sign up for our list, you will get the first 10 chapters of Everdark free. That's over 48,000 words to read. A link is down in the description below. He found himself glancing at Shioni. She was looking at Caden with tenderness. This was not surprising, but it did annoy him, as it confirmed his own feelings that his attack on this young man had been unwarranted, and it had led to even greater wrongs. How are you doing, Caden? You are Caden Bryce, yes? Shioni asked. Caden's gaze slipped to the plushies in Shioni's arms. A faint smile appeared on his lips, but it was quickly gone. Yeah, I am. It is good to finally see you, Caden. We've been looking for you, she said. Caden stared at the floor. I know. Yes, he knew. It was then that Valerius realized that Raziel was not reacting aggressively. In fact, the spirit had retreated into the deepest part of him. All he could see of it was its red eyes and nothing more. Are you afraid, Raziel? He asked and couldn't hide his shock. Raziel said nothing, but it did make strange noises, almost a cross between growls and whines. Valerius was distracted from his spirit by the teenaged girl who had rushed over to Wally and Landry. She'd wrapped her arms around Wally first and then reached for Landry and drew her into a three-way hug. Are you guys all right? Did they hurt you? Her voice was sweet, though muffled, as she hugged them. Of course, she would think that they would be hurt. His actions had probably taught her that. We're tougher than we look, kid, Wally assured her with a broad smile. Why did you and your brother come here, Tilly? Landry asked, sounding aggrieved and shooting looks of disbelief at Caden. These looks were lost on the boy as he was staring at the floor, and yet Valerius was certain that Caden was completely aware of him. Are you afraid, little white dragon? Valerius thought. Should you be? Caden's head suddenly lifted, and he was staring at Valerius intently, as if he had heard what he thought. But that wasn't possible. We saw you on the news, and Caden said he had to come. He said he had to be here. He didn't want anything to happen to you guys because of him. Tilly looked over her shoulder at her brother, and I wouldn't let him go alone. I'll need you to take her home, Landry. The stew's on the stove, and it's going to burn, Caden said nonsensically. He let out a sharp laugh as if he knew how ridiculous that sounded. <laughs> Not that it matters much right now. Dinner at home. That was said with such longing that it hurt to hear. Home, Valerius thought, wanting to go home again. I remember that. But you cannot go home after the spirit finds you. 
His spirit was still hiding in darkness and watching Caden like a hawk. Valerius wished he had the mirror here that was in the throne room. He would be able to see Caden's spirit. He wondered if that spirit was hiding as much as Razia was. Please, Caden said to him. The young man turned all his attention to Valerius. His hands reached towards him as if Caden could physically draw something out of him. Please leave the rest of them alone. They have nothing to do with this. It's me you're looking for. It's me you want. Just leave them alone and I'll come with you. A shudder went through Caden's muscular form and he drew his arms tightly against his chest and fisted his hands. Valerius imagined that he was digging his fingernails into his palms in order to anchor himself in this moment and not bolt. Not that Caden could have gone far. Both captains of the claw had slowly moved around the room so that they were now flanking him. He wondered if the young man knew that, but then he saw Caden's head turn slightly to the right and then to the left. He did know he was trapped. Caden, you shouldn't have come, Wally told him with a shake of his head. Landry and I were fine. They weren't going to do anything to us we couldn't have handled. You should have stayed away. And go where? I can't go home again, Wally, Caden said the last almost to himself. Did you go home again, Caden? Shioni asked gently. He nodded. It's all I've wanted since this started. I just want to go home. I just want this to be over and done and forgotten. Hardly the words of a conqueror, Raziel, Valerius said mentally to his spirit. Raziel, though, merely growled and whined some more. Why don't you tell us what happened? Shioni suggested. Caden let out a breath and ran a hand through his hair. I went outside to talk to Tilly. That's my sister. He nodded towards the girl that was clutched by both Wally and Landry. Suddenly, there was smoke coming from the east side of the square, I think. We're on the west side. All the police ran towards the smoke. Everyone else was running away from it. And then I saw a girl. His forehead bunched as he clearly tried to remember everything he'd seen. A girl? Who was this girl? Did you recognize her? Shioni asked. He shook his head. No. She was putting a backpack against one of the pillars near the center of the square. The way she was moving was wrong. Suspicious. I knew she was up to something. A girl? Do you mean a child? Valeria says sharply. She looked the same age as Tilly, Caden answered quickly. Looked like, Shoni asked for clarification. I thought she might be a shifter, Caden said. Everyone in the room stiffened. A shifter had set the bomb? Valerius had assumed, if it hadn't been Caden himself, that it had been a human's first action. How can you be sure? Simi broke in. Caden turned around to look at him. I thought she had nightshine in her eyes, but I, I, I can't be sure. I, I don't know for certain. We will discuss this later, Valerius said with a calming motion of his arm. Go on, Caden. It was the first time that he had said the young man's name, and it seemed to shimmer in the air between them. Caden stared at him with an open mouth for a moment. He appeared dazed, but then he shook himself. I, 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 well, that was when I realized that the smoke was in the opposite direction from where she was, as if to distract everyone from her, Caden explained, and Valerius thought that he was likely right. That was when she opened up the top of the backpack, and that's when I saw the timer. I knew it was a bomb. Why didn't you call one of the police officers over, Caden? Why did you do this all yourself, you foolish boy? Wally asked with a shake of his head. Valerius was going to snap at him to be silent, but then he realized that this was the right question to ask, and Caden seemed eager to tell his boss what he had done and why, perhaps more eager than to tell himself in the claw. There was no time. Everyone was dealing with the smoke. I realized that if I tried to get someone to help with the bomb, that it would be too late. I was the only one who could do anything in time. Caden admitted with a sad shrug. A smile appeared on his lips, but it was tremulous. Believe me, Wally, I had no intention of playing the hero. Playing the hero, Valerius thought, or simply being one. What made you go to the drop, Caden? Shioni asked. I thought I could throw it off there. It was the only place I could think of where people would be safe if it exploded, Caden exclaimed. But you did not throw the bomb off the drop. Valerius said quietly, understanding what was next. Did you? Because there wasn't enough time left, Caden admitted. 
I could try and throw the bomb far enough and hope that no one would get hurt or I could could ensure that it went far enough away. You thought you were going to die, Valerius thought, but did not say out loud. Yes, Caden answered the question Valerius had only said in his mind. The Dragon King stiffened. Tilly made a sound that was like a wounded animal. Oh, Caden, you jumped, you, you jumped. He lowered his head. I didn't want to leave you, Tilly, or Mom or Dad. I didn't want to to die. But even if I somehow survived the blast, if others didn't, I couldn't live with myself. Hero, Valerius thought. What have we done, Raziel? Tilly ran back to her brother and threw her arms around him. He held her and buried his face against her shoulder. Shioni reached over and touched Valerius's arm. Her voice was low as she said, I think we should stop the questioning for now, Valerius. Cade needs to rest and recover. Perhaps he can go back home. No, he may rest and recover, but he will do so at high reach. His gaze slid back to Caden. I will not let him out of my sight again. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter. If you want to read ahead in Dragon's Reign or read the many other stories hosted there, you can purchase a membership to get access to WraithRain.com or you can continue to listen along here for free. If you'd like to learn more about WraithRain.com and me, there's a link in the description down below. 